the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to the Christmas for 2022. I know you have come from parishes, pastoral areas, institutions, and we are all gathered here 
as one family. I welcome you all in the name of Jesus. I forgot to mention that the Nuncio, Nuncio is also here. So the Cardinal is here. The Auxiliary Bishop is here. And let me introduce to you somebody you knew sometime last week, but this week. as an ambassador to go to Katsina Allah. Congratulations, my Lord Bishop. Now, let's go back to the business of the day. We have to invite Jesus into our hearts, into this worship environment. And we know that when Jesus is with us, he does wonderful things for us. He forgives us. He blesses us. He fills us with graces. So let us pause for a while and invite Jesus into our hearts and ask him to take control of this celebration that all will be done successfully to his glory. Let us now pause and reflect what we have done wrong and beg Jesus to forgive us so that we shall stand confidently and worthily before him. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary Ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. O God, who anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, graciously grant that being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good tidings to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the yea of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. But you shall be called the priests of the Lord. Men shall speak of you as the ministers of our God. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring the midst of the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them, that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. The word of the Lord. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord.
my faithfulness and my mercy shall we with him and through my name shall his horn be exalted he shall say of me you are my father my god the rock my From the book of Revelation. Grace to you and peace from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of kings on earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priest to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, everyone who pierced him, and all tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Even so, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty, the Word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. At that time, Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and he went to the synagogue, as was his custom, on the Sabbath day. And he stood up to read, and there was given to him the book of the prophet Isaiah. He opened the book and found the place where it was written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant, sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, those of you who are upstairs and those of you who are downstairs, once again, good morning to you all. This week marks the peak of our Lenten observance, a period during which the church calls us to more intense prayers. We have been asked to pray before, but this week we are asked to pray more. We are asked to do more prayers, more sacrificial giving, and more personal discipline. And the church invites us to make more liberated efforts to be nearer to God in purity of heart and mind. This last week of Lent can be compared to what is, for the mechanic, a time for overhauling the engine of his car for a pending journey. For the student, a time for revision as he or she faces examinations. For the trader, a time of reconciling accounts before the next purchases. For the footballer, an extra time during a pitch. And for the priest and religious, it's like the fervent preparations for ordination and profession. And for every Christian, it's a time 
to urgently call on Jesus as Bartimaeus, the blind beggar, did. He called on Jesus practically and fervently as Jesus was passing by. So I urge all of us, dear brothers and sisters, to use this golden opportunity of the Holy Week to renew our commitment to Jesus and to listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to all worlds as the family of God in the Archdiocese of Abuja. Look at the congregation here, I certainly appreciate your sacrifice of time to be personally I see people upstairs and downstairs, the church is packed full. It's a lot of sacrifice you have made to be here to participate in this Christmas Mass, during which we pray for priests. You can see the number of priests Hey, more than ever. We have come so that we present ourselves to pray for us. We are asking God to bless the priests so that they can exercise their ministerial duties in close collaboration with the bishop and to be a flame of hope that the prophet Isaiah kindled among the exiled Jews in our first reading. And this happens when we priests preach the good news, we bind broken hearts, we proclaim liberty to the captives, we console prisoners, we comfort those who mourn, namely those who are hungry, those who are poor, the unemployed youths, and there are many of them, and to assure them of God's unfailing love. The Christian Mass, just like the Cathedratical Mass, has become for us a joyful event, a time to celebrate, to celebrate that we are brothers and sisters, irrespective of the accident of history and geography. To sustain this spirit, I urge the priests to encourage more people to attend archdiocesan liturgical functions, archdiocesan liturgical celebrations. This microphone is happening to me. Are you hearing the same thing? It looks like it's a. Uh, you see? Huh. Of all these, this is what the microphone will have. Yes, I was just saying that um, I'm so happy to see this crowd and all praying together as one family, but I'm saying we can do more and therefore we are asking our priests to encourage more and more people to participate during liturgical functions that involve the whole archdiocese. And it happens only once in a while, it's not always. We know how people are committed to their parishes, they go to church there, they do a lot of events. But we're asking when we have a, an archdiocesan celebration like that, we should all be here as one family. And I wish to see more participation, especially of our senior government officials who are Catholics. I want to see more participation of our politicians and those who are in business. Please, this is also for you. It's for all of us. It's not just for others excluding those in government and those who are politicians or those who are high-level business people. It's for all of us. I would have loved to see all our Catholic ministers here. I can only see one. Or are there others? And um, this one we see all the time. Part of the others, they should come and let us pray together.
We have many senators. We have many high-level businessmen and women. It's good that we come together. And I tell you, when people see us together like this, it encourages them. The other Catholics are encouraged. And they say, oh, this must be something beautiful, something special. So I'm asking my priest to kindly convey message, the message of any function at the Archdiocesan level to all, the big and the small, all of them, so that we can come together and pray as one family. The Holy Father's call to synodality is a call to all of us to participation, communion, and mission. And each year we have this Christmas. For me, it's the most, it's very beautiful ceremony. It brings us together. The priests are renewed in their vows, and we are blessing the oils. Every Catholic should be here to witness this. You are praying for the priests, and the priests are praying for you. So all I'm saying is, let us not exclude any section. It is a family, and everybody should be a member of this family, especially when it comes to praying together. You must find the time. If you are too busy to find time for God and for his work, you are busier than God wants you to be. Let us find the time to be together as one family. On this day too, you know, as I told you, we priests will renew our priestly commitments. And I wish to dwell on three symbolisms during priestly ordination. Those of you who have witnessed priestly ordination, you notice that at one point the priest is lying down, prostrating during the litany of the saints, symbolizing a dying to self, symbolizing humility, nothingness. The Spanish people say nada, nada, nothingness. It symbolizes self-emptying. The priest lies down, meaning that I am nothing. In Greek we say kenosis. You empty yourself and you are nothing, and you are able to give of yourself. That is the symbolism, number one, I want us to think about. Then no, the second symbolism is when the priest kneels in front of the bishop and puts his two hands into the palms of the bishop and promises obedience to the bishop and to his successors and to the superiors of the priest. Meaning that when asked, after you do that promise, when the superior or the bishop asks you to go anywhere to walk, you go. Like when Jesus commanded his disciples to go, they went. They carry nothing. They went and they came back rejoicing. So when the superior or the bishop asks you to go and teach, you go and teach because there is the need. If he says you go and walk in the prison, not to go and become a prisoner, but to walk in the prison. You go and walk in the prison. When he says it is to walk in the hospital, or to work with the customs, the immigration, the military, or even where the people are so poor, the priest is ready to go with joy and gratitude in his heart because he has been mandated to carry out a specific mission. And it is this type of disposition that is the source of happiness for the priest. When a priest is able to say, I am going wherever I am sent, that is a tremendous source of happiness. So remember when you put your hands in the hand, palms of the bishop and promise obedience, you say, take me wherever there is need. I am going to go with joy in my heart and with gratitude in my heart. Then the third symbolism is when the priest is presented with a chalice and the bread. The bread. The bishop gives him the chalice and the bread as a sign that he should be ready to celebrate the Holy Mass. Every day, celebrate the Holy Mass. Not some days, but every day. You have no other work again as a priest. What work do you have? Even if you are an engineer, a professor, a doctor, your primary work is the priesthood. 
you must offer this holy sacrifice every day, not some days. And the bishop is telling you, have the chalice, have the bread, go and celebrate this mass for your personal sanctification and also for the people of God. And whether these people are in the rural areas or urban areas, go and offer mass for them. Whether they are rich or poor, offer mass for them. Illiterate or literate, be there for them. Offer mass for them to nourish their soul with this sacrament of immortality. That is what the Eucharist is called. Those three symbolisms I have mentioned. The priest lies down, the priest gives his hands into the hands of the bishop, and now the priest receives the bread and the chalice. They are very profound. A priest suffers and is heading to what I call priestly discontent when he begins to make personal choices or to question. I know we are taught philosophy as part of our training. We do a lot of philosophy, metaphysics and all those things. We are taught to question, but when you become a priest, you have to give your philosophy a pause and begin to think like somebody with faith. But when the priest begins to question everything and begins to compare or even to argue, the priest is running into trouble. So we are saying to we, the priest, that we should remember that the church is our mother, the church is our teacher. And once we give our hands and surrender ourselves to the church, it means we are saying, let the church, our teacher and mother, make decisions for us. As the priest is no longer his own, the priest is no longer his property. I don't belong to myself now. And you as a priest, you don't belong to yourself. You belong to the church. You belong to God entirely. That was what you promised. A priest should be able to close his eyes and genuinely say to himself, where am I needed the most? Is it in a school or in a hospital, in a rural parish or in an urban parish? A priest should be able to do that. <clears throat> Some priests close their eyes and see that they are teaching in a school, but they would like to serve in the hospital. That is not healthy. If you are teaching in a school, focus on the school. Give everything you have to the school. Don't be dreaming that you would want to work in the hospital. Some are working in a rural area and they would like to relocate to a bigger area. That brings discontent. Dear lay people, you have helped us to do our work well. Dear lay people, you are the friends and brothers and sisters and family of we the priests. Kindly support us, priests, even when we are sent to very difficult mission. There are some missionary priests here, if they tell you where they have been sent outside of Nigeria, the Missionary Society of St. Paul will tell you, even our auxiliary bishop has been a missionary in Sudan, in Liberia, in South Africa, and they have seen things. It's not easy at all. And if the priest is ready to go, he will be happy. But when the priest begins to complain and argue and select and criticize, then the priest is losing it. Something is wrong. So you, the lay people, should help us. Sometimes the lay people add fire to the fuel by saying, Father, what did you do that they are punishing you like this? Whose son do you want them to punish? Whose friend and family member do you want the church to punish? And by the way, why should you define mission as punishment? So you, the lay people, please stop sympathizing and pitying us when we are sent to perform a particular mission. You should support us with prayers, you should support us even materially, and encourage us to go. That is where our salvation lies. But when you begin to say, why? Is it only you? Why? Are there no others? For God's sake, you don't encourage us. We priests 
should really mean it when we join the congregation to say the post-communion prayer. We always say, Jesus, I love you. All I have is yours. Yours I am and yours I want to be. Do with me whatever you will. That is a powerful prayer. Do with me whatever you will. I think when, when we priests say that we should mean it. Do with me whatever you will. I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to the word of God, according to God's desires. At an interview, when we are in, interviewing candidates for the priesthood, we ask them, why do you want to be a priest? And they have a standard answer. I want to be a priest because I want to serve God and to serve his people. That is a standard answer. And it is very fine. But I want you to add, perhaps to this answer, I want to serve God and his people anytime, anywhere, anyhow, and in any circumstance. I want to go where I am needed and not where I think I should be. That should be a complete answer. I want to serve God and his people anytime, anywhere, anyhow, and in any circumstance and to go where I am needed, not where I think I should be. We priests, we, it takes a, a long time to form us. Nine years, ten years, some even fifteen years, they are forming the priests. Despite all that long training, you, our family members, you, our parishioners, you can help in the formation of priests. Help to form priests in selflessness and pastoral availability. This is very important. You can have all the years of training. If you are not selfless as a priest, there is something defective about you. If you are not available as a priest, there is something not right. And if you are not rooted in the Eucharist, then there is something fundamentally wrong. So we are begging that families should be involved in the training of seminarians. The seminary, of course, where we send them, the rector and the staff, they do a wonderful work, but they need to be complemented. So the family, the seminary, and the parish, these are all needed so that we form our priests well. The priesthood is not a career. It's not a career. It's not a profession. It is a call to service. Hence, a priest can be asked to walk with the people on the hill, with the river Rhine people, with people in the prison, with farmers, civil servants, politicians, or the very poor to lead them in the path of salvation. The priest can be called and summoned at any time. Since you have given yourself, go and walk with those on the hill. Go and walk with those on the river. Go and walk with the prisoners. Go and walk with those farmers. Settle somewhere without any houses and anything. Go and walk with them or those who really have nothing. And the priest should be able to say, I am going. The priest is expected to preserve the dignity of the priesthood that we receive from God and be content just being priest. Be happy being a priest, not to be somebody else. Sometimes contemporary life makes us to feel we should be somebody like the senator, like the, the, the director, like the chief and all that. No, the priest should be happy being a priest to become clothed with Christ, as Galatians chapter 5, verse 27 says. The priest is to nourish the people with the word and to strengthen them with the sacraments, to be with the people and to encourage them by bringing them hope and consolation. This is what the priest should be doing, and this is what you will beg God today in your prayers to help us to do for you and for God. I was very impressed to know just some weeks ago, that the Legion of Mary initiated the move to create the IDP camp as an outstation, a place called Dag Dagba. Eh? 
Dagba, Dagba, not far from here, around where? Area 1. These were displaced people from all parts. They came and they are there, and the Legion of Medes found them out and decided to bring them together. And today they have become an outstation under the cathedral. The Legion of Mary, they did this. And the name of the outstation is Our Lady Help of Christians. So, I am saying kudos to Legion of Mary. You know, the people are there with their children, with their women, with their men. Even though they have no church land, they have no place that is their own. They are worshipping in a makeshift tent. I was glad to visit them. Father Jumo took me there. I was so happy to pray with them. And I said, this is what the other societies of the church should be doing. I know many church societies are doing similar things, but I just brought this out to show you that this is what you should do and more of it should be done. If the Legion of Mary had not gone, those people would have been lost. So you can see why I refer to the Legion of Mary today in my sermon as pastoral heroes. They are pastoral heroes. And another group I would mention are the parishioners of Vietna, Viet, Vietna pastoral area, where Father Timothy A.J. is the parish priest. They were having this little church, worshiping happily, but they were told that they were going to demolish the church, and they had to leave. So they, on their own, started breaking the church and removing the, the blocks so that they could transport them to a safe area. And all of them were involved. The parishioners came, they were breaking, taking the blocks, and they found a little place where they are building now. And I tell you, they are working together. I have seen them, they are working together. The priest with the shovel and the digger, the people carrying headpans and stones and whatever, and they are all working together. And their church is coming up and up. But that Timothy A.J. can bear witness to that. So, why am I giving that example? And there are many others like that. I'm, I just chose these two today to tell you we are all doing something and we should do more of it. That is the essence of gathering together to share. All these places have nothing. And I'm telling their story so that if you are moved, you can help them. You can help them if you are moved. Ask where they are. Like yesterday, somebody came to my house and said, I have a borehole. In fact, two, tell me where I should go and fix them. I was very happy and I thanked him a lot. So, we have very kind people among you who have been doing it, who are still doing it, and I know will continue to do it. May God continue to bless you. May Mary intercede for us priests to renew our priestly zeal and commitment today that we should remain aligned with God's purpose and in the likeness of Christ, as Presbyterorum Ordinance number 12 says. St. Ignatius of Antioch urges us all, believers, priests, religious, the laity, all believers, that we should not merely be called Christian, but also to be Christian. Remember the difference. We should not just be called merely Christian, but also to be Christian. That is to be imitators of Christ. Dear brothers, dear sisters, dear friends, I wish all of us a most rewarding and spiritually fulfilling holy way. God bless you now and forever.
One of the high points of today's celebration is that the priests renew their commitment to priestly ministry. And so, all the priests would surround their bishop as he makes call on them to remain faithful. He will ask three questions to which all the priests would answer, I am. And after the three questions to the priests, we the lay faithful will rise as the bishop turns to us, making two requests on us. And to this request, to each, we would answer, Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. The Archbishop, the Chief Shepherd, requests that all the priests present surround the altar. So fathers rise and go round the sanctuary. Beloved sons, on the anniversary of that day when Christ our Lord conferred his priesthood on his apostles and on us, are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people the promises you once made? Are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conform to him, denying yourselves and confirming those promises about sacred duties towards Christ's church, which prompted by love of him, you willingly and joyfully pledged on the day of your priestly ordination? Are you resolved to be faithful stewards of the grace of God in the Holy Eucharist and the other liturgical rites, and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, following Christ the Head and Shepherd, not seeking any gain, but moved only by zeal for souls? As for you, dearest sons and daughters, I'm talking to the congregation now. Pray for your priests. I have said it to you. Support your priests. Pray for them. Don't discourage them. Pray for your priests, that the Lord may pour out his gifts abundantly upon them and keep them faithful as ministers of Christ the High Priest, so that they may lead you to him who is the source of salvation. Christ, hear us. us. Christ, graciously hear us. 
And I ask you also, congregation and the entire church, pray for me also. The work of a bishop appears glamorous from the outside, but inside is not as easy. So we need your Bishop Isaac Dubu will know what I am saying when he gets in. Pray for us, the auxiliary bishop, the cardinal, all of us. Pray for us. Even the nuncio, we pray for him that we may be faithful to the apostolic office entrusted to us in our lowliness and that in your midst we may be made day by day a living and more perfect image of Christ, the priest, the good shepherd, the teacher, and the servant of all. Christ, Christ hear us. Christ graciously hear us. May the Lord keep us all in his charity and lead us all, all of us, shepherds and flock, to eternal life. Amen. Congratulations, dear priest. You can congratulate yourself. <laughs> yes. Fathers, just remain where you are. Fathers, just remain standing there. Choir, it pays to serve Jesus. the oils that will be blessed and consecrated, the oil of the sick, the oil of catechumens, and the oil for the Holy Christ.
Holy Father, the faithful of the Catholic Archdiocese of Abuja, through the Health Commission, present you this oil to bless for the sick. May all who will be anointed by this oil experience the compassion of Christ, his healing, and his saving love in both body and spirit. of Abuja through the liturgical commission present to you this oil to be consecrated for holy cuisine. May all who are to be baptized confirmed and ordained with this oil. May they experience gracious grace of the Holy Spirit. Oil for the holy cuisine.
ancestors that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God Almighty Father. May the power of this sacrifice, O oh Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us grace of salvation and newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the New and Eternal Covenant. And by your wondrous design, we are pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the Church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in the sacred ministry through a laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word, and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we are claimed. sending down your spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, 
He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Ignatius, our Archbishop, Aslem, our Auxiliary Bishop, may your most unworthy servants and all the clergy Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. God, that is the blessing of the oil of the sick. God, Father of all consolation, who through your Son have will to heal the infirmities of the sick, listen favorably to the prayer of faith. Send down from heaven, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the Paraclet, upon the rich substance of this oil, which you were pleased to bring forth from vigorous green trees to restore our bodies so that by your holy blessing this oil may be for everyone who is anointed with it a safeguard for body, mind and spirit to take away every pain, every infirmity and every sickness. May it become your holy oil, O Lord, blessed by you for our use. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, 
forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. May the body and blood of Christ bring all of us to everlasting life. Prayer before Holy Communion, prayer for help. Oh God, help me to make a good communion. Mary, my dearest mother, pray to Jesus for me. My dear angel guardian, lead me to the altar of God. Amen.
Let us pray. We beseech you, Almighty God, that those you renew by your sacraments may merit to become the pleasing fragrance of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
Glory to Jesus. All glory to Jesus. We'll briefly take a few announcements. The first will come from the Chancellor of the Archdiocese of Abuja, Very Reverend Father Sebastian Atagoba Musa. He's been directed to guide us in a few things in the Archdiocese. Father Musa, please. Glory to Jesus. Good morning, Your Grace. Good morning, Your Eminence. Sorry, good afternoon. Your Grace, Your Eminence, Monsignori, brother priests, religious, brothers and sisters in Christ. The bishops of the Regional Episcopal Conference of West Africa Rekoa, whose current president is our Archbishop, Most Reverend Ignatius Ayao Kaigama, will meet here in Abuja 
from the 2nd of May to the 9th of May, all the bishops from West Africa will be here in our archdiocese. As a hosting archdiocese, the closing mass will be celebrated by all the bishops at the paper ground at the 12th Apostles Cathedral. This historic event will take place on the 8th of May. A local organizing committee has been set up, headed by Very Reverend Father Sam Tumba. On behalf of this committee, on behalf of the Archbishop, I wish to sincerely appeal to you for three things. One, for prayer, that they are coming, they are staying, and they are going will be peaceful and successful. Will you pray? I hope you pray. Second appeal, this day is a Sunday. 8th of May is a Sunday. I know how committed you are to your parishes. I know that you like to have meetings after masses in your various parishes. But on this day, I'm also appealing to you that meetings be suspended in parishes, that we all come together at the Cathedral of the Twelve Apostles to look at these 200 bishops, or over 200, coming to Abuja. So I want to appeal to you that you'll be there. Will you be there? Are you sure? The third appeal, when they come, they will drink water, they will eat, they will sleep, they will wake up. The third appeal is your support. We thank you for the past support, and we are calling you upon you again to please don't be tired in giving. So I want to appeal that to you, through your parishes, parish priests, your chaplains, that an account number will be made available at the end of today through your parish priests for your support. Support as groups, support as parishes, as chaplains, chaplaincies, and so on. As families, remember this saying that at all, at all, I don't hear you. I heard a new one lately, that at all, at all, now be winch. Glory to Jesus. So if after this Mass, you cannot wait to contribute, please see me outside. You know I'm a beggar. After this Mass, if you, if you cannot wait to contribute, please kindly see me after this Mass. May God bless you as you do so, through Christ our Lord. We shall keep on reminding you about this Mass and this conference before the 8th of May. Thank you. Radio Maria, we want to inform you of the presence and operation of Radio Maria in our Archdiocese and our own radio station. It is operating on the FM wavelength 91.3, 91.3. For more information on how to be a presenter on this radio program, kindly contact Father John Chinenye Uloma, the director for briefing. We shall also make his contacts available to you through your parish priests. Thank you for listening, and may God bless you all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Reverend Fathers, we are all aware that the Catholic Bishops Conference of Nigeria has approved for use a new Prayers of the Faithful book. The use of this book takes effect in the Archdiocese of Abuja on Easter Sunday. Therefore, every parish, pastoral area, institution, mass centers, every 
arm of the, every part of the Archdiocese who begin to use this book as the official book for bidding prayers, prayers of the faithful. No other text is acceptable for use from Easter Sunday. The Catholic Secretariat of Nigeria, alongside the Pauline publication, they are here to make these books available to us. The price is 7,000 Naira, but of course you can pay more than that. It is prayers of the faithful, so your payment is also a prayer. By Sorry, the books are for priests to use in parishes, not for lay people, and they are not complaining as regards the 7,000 Naira. Except you want to pay for, or you want the priest to pay now, and you refund them the money later. The main stand for the sale of the book will be by the chapel, but there will be young men and women who will be going around the compound carrying the prayers of the faithful book, now approved. It was actually put together by the Nigerian church, approved for the Nigerian church by the Holy See. On the 18th of April, which is Easter Monday, the Education Commission invites all the old boys of St. Simon and Jude Junior Seminary, Kujie, to the groundbreaking ceremony for a new hostel at the school compound and masters by 10 a.m. All old boys of that noble institution are meant to be part of this noble ceremony. On the 26th of April, the Theological Commission invites all of us, people of God, to a seminar on the year after Laudato Si. And the venue is here, the Pro Cathedral. The time is 10 a.m. Justice, Development and Peace Commission of the Archdiocese sincerely appreciates the, uh, the contribution and generous donations of all of us during this season of Lent. They also remind us that the Lenten boxes, the Lenten bags we still have with us are to be submitted on Good Friday in our various parishes. Please do not forget. Make sure you turn in a heavy bag. The us blessed and consecrated, blessed already and will be consecrated, will be distributed to priests for use according to deaneries. So, after the celebration today, meet the dean of your deanery and collect your oils. The oil of catechumen will be blessed now. The oil of catechumen, may we all rise.
We now bless the oil of the catechumens. God, strength and protection of your people, who have placed in the oil you have created a sign of endurance, graciously bless this oil. Grant fortitude to catechumens who are anointed with it, that receiving your divine wisdom and strength, they may understand more deeply the gospel of your Christ, may undertake generous, generously the labors of Christian life, and made worthy of adoption to sonship, may find joy in being born again and living in your church through Christ our Lord. Let us pray, dear brothers and sisters, to God the Father Almighty, that he may bless and sanctify this fragrant oil, and may those outwardly signed with it by be inwardly anointed and made worthy of divine redemption. We 
bless the prison. God, author of every increase and of all spiritual growth, graciously accept the joyful homage of thanksgiving which the Church renders you through our voice. <clears throat> For in the beginning you commanded the earth to produce fruit-bearing plants, and among them the olive tree, to bring forth the great richness of this oil that its fruit might serve for the making of sacred chrism. David too, foreseeing by the spirit of prophecy the sacraments of your grace, sang of oil, making our faces radiant to joy, and when in former days the world's sins were washed away in the great flood, the dove, showing forth by an olive branch, a figure of the gift to come, announced that peace had been restored to the world. In these latter days, all this has been manifestly fulfilled. For when all sinful deeds are washed away in the waters of baptism, an anointing with this oil makes our faces joyful and serene. Moreover, to your servant Moses, you gave the command that he make his brother Aaron washed first with water, a priest, by the pouring of this oil. To this there came still greater dignity when your son Jesus Christ our Lord insisted on being washed by John in Jordan's waters. For as your Holy Spirit in the likeness of a dove was sent upon him from on high, your voice then followed and declared him to be your only begotten son well pleasing to you, and you were seen clearly to affirm him. Just as your prophet David had foretold, as the one anointed with the oil of gladness above his companions. All the priests now extend their right hand towards this uh, prison until the end of this prayer every priest. To you, therefore, O Lord, we pray that by your blessing you may graciously sanctify the rich substance of this oil you have created and permeate it with the strength of the Holy Spirit by means too of the power at work in your Christ from whose holy name is named the chrism, with which you have anointed your priests and kings, prophets and martyrs, for those to be reborn through the spiritual birth of baptism, make the chrism you have created a holy sign of the fullness of life and salvation, that through the sanctification imparted by the anointing and with the corruption of their first birth now cleansed, that they may be made a temple of your majesty and give forth the fragrance of an innocence of life pleasing to you. By the nature of the sacrament you have established, may they be endowed with the dignity of king, priest, and prophet, and clothed with the garment of that incorruption which is your gift. And may this oil become the chrism of salvation for those who will be born again of water and the Holy Spirit and make them partakers of eternal life, sharers of heavenly glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now you have all the three different oils blessed and consecrated. We have the oil of prison. What do you say to God? Thank you to God. We have the oil of the sea. What do you say to God? We have the oil of catechumen. What do you say to God? Let God hear you clap and say his name. This is 
This is a gift. This is a gift. It's a gift to all of us, to me, to you, to everyone, the small and the big, all. It's a gift, free of charge. F-O-C, free of charge. It is because it is God's gift and God's grace. So we are happy that we have this gift for the next one year. May God preserve us throughout this year and make us see next year when we shall bless another prison. Congratulations to the Archdiocese of Abuja. Now the, uh, the Auxiliary Bishop of the Archdiocese of Abuja, Most Reverend Anselm Omoren, MSP, who give us the vote of thanks, my Lord. Glory to Jesus. Glory, glory, glory to Jesus. My dear brothers, uh, my dear sisters, on behalf of the Archbishop of Abuja, His Grace, Most of the Ignatius Kai Gama, and all the priests, I'd like to especially thank all of you for coming out in such a large number to pray with us and to pray for us in particular today as we renew our commitment. Thank you for coming. Continue to pray for us. We also will keep you in our prayers. I also want to use this opportunity to wish each and every one of us a very fruitful Holy Week and a very happy Easter in advance. Thank you, God bless you, and stay safe. Okay, thank you, Bishop Anselm Moren. He has thanked you, I don't need to repeat that. But there is an information he didn't know, I will give it to you now, because he, I didn't tell him beforehand. But before that, let me again thank you for all your support, your wonderful support. Because I have seen that the Cathedraticum went very well in all the six dinner. Very well. The spirit was good. The congregation the dancing, the prayers, everything was good. Can you clap for yourselves, please? Thank you, God. And even the contributions continue to increase. When I go to visit the villages and interior places, they have plenty of problems. So when they tell me the problem, I say, wait. After the cathedraticum, I will see what I will do. But the problems are so big. Since you started giving us these cathedraticum gifts, I want to tell you that we have not used it for ourselves. For myself, for the auxiliary bishop, for the cardinal, we have used it for the people in need, the parishes, pastoral areas, and those things that matter so much. So please, keep it up. You have done extremely well. And then, finally, the cathedral. Uh, the new cathedral building. Please know that we don't have two cathedrals here. We have only one. The pro cathedral is what we have. That one there is a cathedral building. It's a proposed cathedral. It's ongoing. It's not yet a cathedral. So it's, uh, we call it the new cathedral 
building. But this one is our pro cathedral. And I want to say we had also begged you to help so that we can finish paying the first phase of the uh, cathedral work. You know, the Italian contractors had done their work, but we didn't finish paying them. And gradually, you have been collecting money, collecting money, and by the grace of God, we are now in a position to conclude the first phase, payment for the first phase, because of your collections from parishes, chaplaincies, and pastoral areas. And this will be done very soon. So, which means we would have concluded with the contractors for the first phase, and we'll be ready to move to the second and even third phase. I'm saying thank you to you because you did so well. It has not been easy, but you did so well. Can you clap for yourselves again? You are finishing one thing and another thing is coming. Rekowa, you have been told, that is the regional episcopal conferences of West Africa. All the bishops, French speaking, Portuguese speaking, English speaking are coming here. Second of May. And I have been the president of Repoa for the past six years. I will be finishing my tenure with this meeting. So will you allow the meeting to come and fail here in Abuja? So please, let's do what is possible. I know Father Sam Tumba is the head of the committee. They are also begging pastoral areas, parishes, institutions to support. They will write to you asking for help again. Don't be tired. We know you have done well for the cathedral. You have done well for the uh, new cathedral building. You have done well, but there is still work to do. So when you get there later, please, please, the priests and the parishioners, do your best. The days are very close now. It's only in about two weeks' time they will be here. So do what you can and let us have a wonderful reception of all the bishops. And then finally, finally, I introduce Monsignor Isaac do good to you in the beginning as, as um, the new bishop elect for Katsina Allah Diocese. And you clap. Didn't you, didn't you clap? You did. Okay. And now, before the end of this mass again, another news has come. I just got, the Holy Spirit told me something has happened somewhere. So we are going to add that news to the one of Monsignor Isaac Dubu. So I will invite Monsignor from the Nunsecho to come and read that news that the Holy Spirit just brought to me now. Your graces, your lordships, hereby I would like to inform you that uh, His Holiness Pope Francis has appointed as uh, Auxiliary Bishop of the Diocese of Maiduguri, Reverend Father John Bonya Bakeni from the clergy of the same diocese. The Holy See will publish this news on 12 April next at 12 o'clock Rome time. Until then, this information remains sub secreto pontificio. Please find and close the curriculum vitae of the new auxiliary bishop elect of Maiduguri. With grateful good wishes and kind regards, I remain yours fraternally in Christ. Antonio Filippazzi, Apostolic Nuncio. So, we thank Monsignor for giving us the news. So, this, uh, God is blessing the Nigerian church. Yesterday we thought it was Kasina Allah today is Maiduguri, and very soon it will be somewhere again. And it affects us. It's our family. That is our church. That's why we should be happy and proud that our church is growing. So today we have a bishop, auxiliary bishop elect of Maiduguri Diocese, 
Father John Bakeni. As I'm talking to you, the people of Maiduguri are celebrating. So join them in celebrating again. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And God bless us. So go home and enjoy the rest of the, the Holy Week. And I pray as Abdullahi has wished us that we have a very wonderful Easter celebration. And I am asking them all in Thailand to take my message to all the senior government officials, all the senior business people and civil servants and all, so that next time we gather, we are all together as one family. Thank you, and may God bless you all. Just to say, Reverend Fathers, as the Archbishop reverences the altar with a kiss, we will all take a bow bow where we are because of the number and then file out for the recession. Also, the cathedral administrator says, please, Fathers, because it's your feast day, your solemnity brought forward after the Mass also gets to the St. John Hall and also the female religious. Can I can them hall? I beg your pardon, not St. John. Can I can them hall? Pascal candles are also available for sale at the Pro Cathedral bookshop. So, fathers, please get your Pascal candle. Where well, the priests are many, I want us to have an impressive picture of the, all the priests here. We don't allow photos in the sanctuary, but this is an exception. I want the priests all to line behind. They are, they are all of us. It's going to be an impressive. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our in the name of the Lord. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you now and forever. Go forth, the Mass is ended. <laughs>